All right, moving on. Now we get to see the twin correspondence to this uh, electric dipole with now the magnetic dipole. All right, so calculate the electric and magnetic fields of an oscillating magnetic dipole without using the approximation three. Again, go reference the notes posted. Do they look familiar? Compare problem 9.35, and we want to find a pointing vector and show that the intensity of the radiation is exactly the same as we got using approximation three, okay? So what we need to know, the potentials of the oscillating magnetic dipole is, well, we have the vector potential, and instead of P naught, we have a mu naught, and sine theta over R with the one minus R, or not one, one over R cosines I, and then one, and then minus omega C sines I in the fiat direction with the, uh, uh, with xi being omega uh, times t minus r over c, which is the retarded time. Again, you just get tired of writing out the omega term. So uh, the potential without the approximation uh, is what we were uh, put on the no page. So if we want to find the fields, well, again, for a magnetic dipole, the uh, scalar potential is zero. Um, so we only need to take the negative time derivative of A in order to find the electric field. So if we do that, uh, you see here that we get ourselves into quite a little pickle because um, now we have to uh, take the uh, chain rule with the omega so we get an extra omega term in the simplification. Again, be aware of negative signs. They tend to creep up everywhere with these trig functions. Not too bad of a calculation, though. The curl, again, only take the parts of the curl that you need. Here we see that the uh, vector potential is only a component in the phi direction. So we only need any component derivative of phi with the proper derivatives. So d, d by d theta has an a phi, and d by dr has an a phi. So that's all we need. We don't need to write out the whole thing just to copy down a bunch of zeros. Feel free to if you want, just for your own uh, sanity, but not needed here. Um, and then once you plug in the component, you know, wh wither it away, man. Apply everything, cancel what you can, just like the R's uh, in the uh, R derivative case for the theta hat. Um, just be very careful. You see here that we have a sine theta uh, squared that we need to take into account for the theta derivative. So, you know, with that, just be aware, as you see in the last line of this slide, that the sine theta is pretty much the hardest thing we have to deal with. But we know that sine theta is also an easy derivative, or sine squared theta is an easy derivative, so we'll be good there. Um, and then we simplify down the R derivative term in the top line of the next page. And, you know, uh, be aware that the uh, product rule has to be used for that 1 over R and a cosine term, but other than that, I think we're pretty good. Let's be careful of the chain rule with the sine. So you see for the theta derivative, we are good to go. We're left with a um, two sine theta, cosine theta, easy enough. Um, that cancels, that sine theta cancels with the term from the spherical curl that we needed to add for the r hat direction. Uh, you know, put the negative sign in for or change the one over r to r to the negative one power, apply the power rule, leave the second term alone. Now leave the first term alone, take the derivative of the second term, and then you chain rule it out. Similarly for the sign, we just have to be aware of the chain rule. I highlighted all the negatives in red so you can see that we will have to cancel them. With that being said, it condenses down pretty quickly into the uh, next two lines where we just tidy everything up. And uh, the field is actually uh, kind of chunky to write out, so I had to box it twice, one for the R hat direction and the other for the theta hat, but it all comes to the same field point. So I'll let you check that out. All right, moving on to the next step. Um, these are precisely the fields we studied in problem 9.35, with A going to mu naught, uh, m naught, omega squared over four pi c, u is equal to negative xi, and the pointing vector quoting the solution to that problem is given by this uh, gross uh, <laughs> grossness that we modified. It's boxed three times because it was so long. Um, but yes, be aware, 
very messy to find the E cross B for these. So if you can use a previous solution, definitely do. Um, and if we time average these to get rid of uh, the uh, U terms or the, yeah, the U terms uh, for the retarded time, then we see we're left with just a sine squared theta over R squared. Much better to have that than anything else. Um, again, we, the theta hat component gets to be rid of after we time average it. Um, so yeah, pretty cool there. Don't overthink it too much, but uh, that was fun. And we'll definitely see more of it soon.